Hey, can you give me that calculator? Yes, just for the calculator. Good evening, everybody. How are you? It's Jeff Gelman of What Would Jeff Do? My weekly Q and A show. Hey, everybody on iTunes, on YouTube, on Spotify. Hey, everybody on SoundCloud, and hey, everybody on Google. Thank you for tuning in. If you're listening to my podcast, welcome to my podcast. Um, don't forget that I just started a Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash solid canine training. And there's a link, um, you know, on our website. There's a link on our Instagram page. Um, and we just brought in a new puppy into the training center. You might want to check out Instagram and Facebook to see the brand new puppy. It's an eight week old border collie. And we're going to be doing lots of puppy videos. And, we'll be, and actually at six months old, we're actually, we're going to be um, selling the puppy, a fully trained dog, and um, which would be great for somebody. And um, the amount of videos that we'll be making will be awesome for somebody as well. Somebody, lots of people, because you'll be able to get a lot of, um, a lot of help. If you're brand new to my world, if you're brand new to the show, it is the What Would Jeff Do show. It's a Q and A, it's a dog training Q and A. My name is Jeff Gelman of Solid Canine Training. And I, um, I'm based in Providence, Rhode Island, and I've got a tra training center in Providence. We specialize in aggression rehab, behavior modification. We have a trick training class. We do, um, uh, uh, you know, easy peasy dogs as well. We can, you know, we can raise puppies. We can do obedience on leash and off leash. But the, the behavior modification is what our specialty is. If you're brand new to the show and you don't know how we train, you definitely want to go over to our, our, our website to learn more about us. We, um, we, we, we're, we're balanced trainers. What balanced trainers means is we believe in yes and no. We reward the heck out of dogs to teach them, um, uh, you know, what, you know, what we want. Um, and then we punish dogs for what we don't want. So this show though, most people will say, Hey Jeff, how do I stop this issue? How do I stop this issue? So, it's called punishment. There's actually a proper way to punish a dog. You're not mad. You're not angry. Um, you're not upset with the dog. We love using training tools. Um, training tools help leverage um, a lot of just average family people with the training. So it's uh, it's really, really fantastic. You can do lots of great stuff. So uh, thanks for tuning in and happy Valentine's Day um, for everybody out there. All right. Let's start okay. the questions. Thank you, Lindsay. I'm feeling under the weather, but I'm hanging tough yep. like the new kids on the block. Um, Eight-week border collie sounds like so much fun. Awesome it is. Um, how to train a dog out. Dog moves away from what you're outing it from. Okay. You did it then. So the way you do out is that's what you want. So the way you do out is a remote collar is a fantastic way to train a dog out. Remote collar is on. On, easiest thing to do is out means move away from like an object, a food bowl. It also means whatever's in your mouth to release. It also move. It also means get out of here, like move away from me. So a remote collar is the most fantastic tool for that. Just remember dogs are killed in animal shelters for resource guarding. It's an almost guaranteed death sentence for a dog that resource guards in a shelter. And then also thousands and thousands of dogs, if not tens of thousands of dogs, if not hundreds of thousands of dogs are turned in to shelters for resource guarding. And resource guarding actually is a three second fix. We do it all the time, very, very successfully. Remote collar on the dog, you'll say the word out, and then you give a, um, a, a stim, a higher end stim on the remote collar, and then the dog uh, moves away from the thing or drops it. Next. How do I get a 15 minute Skype? Um, well, I don't do them free anymore. I did 400 of them for free last year, 400 free Skypes. We give out, we give away about $100,000 in dog training services a year. So last year, well, that was part of it. Uh, this year, I'm doing my What Would Jeff Do tip of the day, which is on all my social media platforms. If you join our Patreon page at a certain level, you can earn yourself a free 15-minute Skype a month. But if you need a Skype from me, we do 30 minutes and 60 minutes, and those are paid. So that's actually how I make a living. I make a living literally by just giving long, personal one-on-one -on -one advice. All right, next. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. Hello. I love you all. I heard you were feeling okay. We got that one. Yep. Thank you. Uh, any way to help basically fearful dogs? Yeah, we, 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 we I would say 50% of the dogs that come into us are fearful. What you don't do is coddle them. So what the, the best thing to do with a fearful dog is this, take your heart out of it, which always sounds so cold and caring, but being overly affectionate and lovey dovey and feeling bad, that sure isn't going to, um, that sure isn't going to help. So lots of structure, tons of structure. So create your dog, create your dog at night, create your dog when you're not um, at home. Lots of obedience, lots of structure. Be very demanding on your dog. That's not mean. Dogs love that. 
Obviously, you can do play. Confidence building exercise. Confidence building exercise such as up and down agility equipment. It doesn't have to be official agility equipment. Just find boxes to go up and down. Find tunnels to go underneath. Trick training. All those things um, uh, help with dogs. Work the dog through the fear. Don't avoid the fear. A lot of people will say, avoid fearful things. That's how you keep a dog afraid for uh, forever. Next. How do I stop two dogs from fighting? How to stop two dogs from fighting is that is um, going to be a, uh, a a 10 hour session. So it's more right now, if you have two dogs that are fighting, this is not the answer. Keep them created separately and only have, you know, one dog out at a time. We specialize in dog fighting dogs though. So what you want to do is number one, they should at least know obedience. They should at least be able to lie down next to each other without fighting. Leashes on the dog at all times. All affection should be cut out with those dogs right now. Massive amounts of structure. You have to figure out a punisher for fighting. So, um, you know, remote collars are great for fighting. A lot of people say, don't use a remote collar on an aggressive dog. That's the biggest line of bullshit I've ever heard in my life. Then they'll say, remote collars, shock collars make dogs more aggressive. It's like, no, they don't. They don't make more dogs more aggressive. Um, dogs have been aggressive for a long time, and it's got nothing to do with electronics. Uh, so for right now, keep them separate, but you need um, you need help, um, professional help from somebody that is experienced in um, aggression rehab. You might want to do a Skype for me. That's not why I do these, to get business from it, but we're talking about the life and death of your dog. Next. Been binge watching you today. Thanks for what you do. Awesome. Thank you. Join our Patreon page. Next. Chris from Pennsylvania, new listener. Awesome. Thank you so much for all you do for average dog owners. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Chris. Uh, next, how to train dog not to run out of doors before release. Um, number one, first of all, make sure you got a good recall for your dog, a good recall for your dog, which means the dog comes back, you know, when you call it. But do you do boundary training? So what will happen is leash on the dog, prong collar on the dog, a remote collar on the dog. You have a leash. You, I've got a video on this. It's called threshold training. You walk up to the door. So you walk up to the door, and if the dog goes ahead of you, if the dog's got a prong collar leash on it, you pop back very, very firmly. Um, if it has a remote collar on it, you're holding the leash, use the remote. You have to have the leash on the dog, though. The leash on the dog is the magic part, because, or else it won't know what to do. It might bolt through the door. And then you can say the word break or okay. You know, you can, you can, you can um, uh, use a release word. So that, that's how you do it. Um, and uh, it's a life or death situation. Dogs bolting outdoors get hit by cars every day or they get lost next how do you get a dog to stay um we don't use the word stay it's expected so it's default behavior so when we say sit or down or place it means stay so it's teach the obedience command and then teach what no means and then teach what break means so the obedience command is say place sorry everybody on, on youtube you can't see this um, teach the dog place, and then if they get off, it would be no with a consequence. That's how you teach dogs how to stay. So um, a lot of people think, well, the more you reward the dog, it'll stay more. No, it won't, because cats are better than treats, and squirrels are better than treats, and your kids running by are better than treats. So it's self-rewarding for a dog to break command. So you have to make it suck to break command. Now, first, you've got to do the basic obedience. But after a couple of days or a couple of weeks, now you start holding the dog accountable. Next. 13 week old puppy jumps up, pet corrector, usual things don't work. Plan to switch to prong at four months. Do a bonker. Bonker is a wrapped up towel. Take a towel, wrap it up. Hey, Pro K9, thanks for the super hearts. Uh, it's secure with two elastics. Dog jumps up on you. You would say no. And then throw the bonker uh, uh, at the dog. Yes. I'm to try the bonker, then you didn't do it right, most likely. You most likely didn't do it right. And you might have done it right, but most 13-week-old puppies or any dog, when you say no and you throw that bonker hard, you won't hurt the dog. It's impossible to hurt the dog. If it was a two-pound, you know, eight-week-old, you know, small breed dog, maybe. But your average 13-week-old dog, it's a cotton towel. You're not going to hurt the dog. Hard. No. Hard. Next. Dog sleeping in bed, a bad idea? Um, depends on your dog if it's got behavioral issues. Aggression, terrible idea. Separation anxiety, terrible idea. Pushy snotty, terrible idea. Fearful, terrible idea. So if you've got a well-balanced, if you got a well-balanced, hey, Pat, if you got a well-balanced dog, who cares? Next. Uh, I have a, an aggressive Tibetan Mastiff with long fur who doesn't respond to the prong collar with hard pop. Okay. First of all, switch to uh, a remote collar, and you're going to use the thick, 
fur contact points, and you're going to shave down a little bit of an area. And if you've got a Tibetan Mastiff, which are like can kill humans, um, you want to make sure that you've got massive amounts of structure in that dog's life. Massive. Cut down affection, and then hold that dog accountable for everything. Next. How do you train dog to wait at threshold and we, leave we, and we, do, we do this. Next. Okay. Yeah, we do threshold already. Next. Uh, is there such thing? Is there such a thing of play too much with a dog? Yeah, yeah, there is. Downtime is important. Downtime is important. This is the big secret to having a calm dog. Teach it to do nothing. Like, see these dogs right here? Again, it's not because they're my dogs. It's not because they're my dogs. They, they, they're not tired. Like, they're not exhausted. They're not tired. But we're inside here being calm. So you should be doing twice as much, twice as much calming exercises as you do active exercises. Also, when young dogs get really, really tired, overtired, they bite you and they nip you. Sort of like kids, they cry when they get overtired. Next. When dog gets in an excited state, bites my clothes. Yep. High correction? Yep. So that again, when dogs get aroused, when, 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 when dogs get aroused, they do stupid stuff. So again, um, the dog, you would say no and you would correct. You have to make it suck for the dog to be biting your clothes. Next. Uh, how do you know when your dog respects you? Uh, you know, respect is a, is a, a what, what does respect mean? I want dogs to listen to me and be happy to listen to me. How do you know? I guess if you have to ask, if you have to ask that question, it doesn't. So, which doesn't make you a bad person and it doesn't make your dog a bad dog. Um, so I've never actually wondered if my dogs respect me or respected me or not at all. Um, I just want to have a good relationship with my dog and I want my dogs to listen to me and I want them to be safe and I want society to be safe. Next. Happy Valentine's Day, Jeff and Linda. Awesome. Thank you guys can tap your screens for hearts. Also, feel free to share this. And if you're, um, you can, you can, you can share this. And also, if you're not following me, you want to, you can follow me. Also, if you have not signed up for a Patreon page, it's patreon.com slash solid canine training. Sign up for that because I'm doing some Patreon only content. You'll only see it there. Next. And I can give you one on help, one help there. Next. Did I do settle? How to train the settle command? Settle command is just duration. Duration work. Next. Did you decide a name for the puppy? No, not yet. But thank you for suggesting one if you did. Got a lot of people that suggested them. Next. Dog is on place. Dog barks at door. Dog runs to crate when e collar corrected. What to do? Tie back? Uh, close the crate door and tie back. You have to teach a dog what a correction means. So leash on the dog. Use a tie back. Dog breaks place. Correct. If you have to say place again at the beginning, do it. And the bottom line is when it gets back to, to place, then correction stop. But you have to guide it with a leash first. Guide it with a leash first. Next. You have to teach your dog how to be corrected. It's very, very important. People are like, what does that mean? After you give the dog a correction, for obedience commands, you have to teach it what to do. If it was eating cat shit and you corrected it and ran away, that's fine. Getting in the trash can. Where, who cares where it goes? Eating dog shit or cat shit or moose shit. Who cares? But breaking place and then correcting, you have to show it what you want it to do, which is go back to your last command and go back into it. Next. Do you feel that people spoil dogs too much? Um, I feel that the downfall of dogs right now is genetically, a lot of dogs are really messed up, with the, uh, the breeding of dogs. Um, and then also, we humanize dogs way too much. We put human emotion on them, which is disrespectful to the dog, and it's disrespectful to the human because the human ends up paying the price. And the dog pays the price with um, its life most of the time. Next. We are getting a puppy. What is the best way to introduce brand new puppy to 10-year-old dog? I don't know anything. I don't know anything about the 10-year-old dog. I need to know that if it's ever met puppies before, if it's ever been raised around puppies before, is it friendly with dogs? Is it pushy? Um, I've, got, I've got no idea about it. The first thing I would do is go get them to exist with each other existence don't get that they don't need to be best friends they don't need to be best friends so it's friendly so yeah so they don't need to be best friends they just need to learn to exist next should play between dogs be structured or limited as in how rough um depends on the dogs i let my personal dogs girl and kira the ones that you just saw right there um i um uh i let them uh play extremely rough with each other extremely rough with each other but they also can stop on a dime. Literally, I say enough, they immediately stop. 
I wouldn't let them play with that like that with any other dog. Personal choice depends on will your dogs escalate to a fight if they get overly aroused or not. The bottom line is if you're going to be able to, if you want to, if you want to encourage your dogs to get excited, you better be able to get them to stop. Next. Have four month old golden doodle. Lately he has been growling and barking at us while trying to bite. Help. Okay. Well, four months old, 16 weeks old, that's not acceptable. The dog won't grow out of it. So what you would do is yes, you can use a bonker. What you can do is you could, you would say no. And a bonker is a cotton towel wrapped up. A lot of people struggle with this, but I struggle with owners getting bit. So it's, um, uh, no, and then bonk. Next. Hard. Next. How did you start? Daycare, home training at your home, and do you need to get a degree to start? No, you don't. You don't need to get a degree in dog training means shit. If it's useless piece of paper, I am sorry it is. And, you know, there's a lot of folks out there that, that I mean, should you go to like a six month school that there is out there? It wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt you to do it. An online school, um, you know, absolutely not. No, you just buy the books, watch videos. You can learn from watching videos than you could from an online school or going to my colleagues' seminars than you would from an online school. But if you want to go to like a six-month school where you bring a dog and you actually take a dog from untrained to fully trained, there's absolute benefit in that. But now it's different because now you have to work with a lot of different dogs. The best way to become a dog trainer is make a shitload of mistakes and find a mentor to work with and work with tons and tons of dogs. Next. Uh, what do you train dogs for? A few family dogs. I save their lives. So I just do I just do family pet dog training. That's all I do is family pet dog training. That's it. Next. What to do with a Dalmatian that takes and eats clothes, shoes, etc. when we leave? Put it in a crate. Your dog's not crated. So your dog could die. So just talk to any vet, any vet tech, and um, uh, uh, um, they'll tell you about the dogs that ingest stuff and they can't operate on it, um, um, or they operate it on it, cost you 3,500 bucks, and then also you would, um, you'd stop your, the, dog, the problem would be fixed. Crate your dog when you're not home, next. My German Shepherd puppy cries all night in crate, what do I do? So make sure number one, your German Shepherd puppy is, is, is healthy, um, number two, if it has to make sure it eats a little bit earlier and has, it drinks water and it doesn't have to go to the bathroom, but if you know that it's healthy, and if you know it's been out for potty time already, you, you tell it to shut up. Walk over to the crate, you say no, and you hit the top of the crate. It's not mean. It's not abusive. The dog won't hate the crate. Why? We do it every single time, and we've never seen the dog get worse. All we see is the dog shut up. Next. Uh, dog just started on e-collar. Okay to correct for counter surfing immediately? Yes, because it, it'll save the dog's life. Next. Uh, have you ever trained a dog for service or therapy? We don't do task training um, at all. So what we do is... Um, we, I can do, we can do public access training. We can do that and we can do obedience, but we don't do any of the tasks. Next. Um, I've used shock, but thought prong was for leash pulling. How do I get Tibetan Mastiff to stop pulling? Um, you can use both. I mean, those are just tools to community. By the way, they're just tools. You have to have the training theory behind it. So, you know, the, both of them are training. I mean, you can use, you can use a clicker to heal the dog. You can't use it to stop the pulling. So you can, there's a lot of tools you can use to train a dog, but we like with a Tibetan Mastiff, especially a prong collar would be good. Um, uh, but if it's if it's not listening to it, what you're doing is you're letting the dog pull. In other words, it's going past threshold and the collar is engaged. And then what you're doing is you're activating the drive in the dog. That's how we would train a protection dog. It's like pull and you get rewarded. So um, you can use both tools. Next. Okay. This next question, I can't really make out. It doesn't my GS at board and train learn e-color for nearsighted me to correct quicker. Will this help me? I don't understand. I don't understand the all. question. Next. So ask it again. Um, what is a tie back? Tie back is taking um, um, taking a leash and tying it to the, it's, uh, it's connected to the clip to the collar, then tied to a heavy piece of furniture or bolt on the floor. You can put a knot at the end of it and put it through a door. It's so the dog can leave place or leave down, but they can't run. They can't break command too much. And it allows you then to solidify your, your commands. I don't want the dog pulling on the tie back. That defeats the purpose. That actually makes the dog more agitated, but it's a it's a it's a small cheat to help you get duration work. Next. My dog chews her toys on my lap. Why and how do I stop it? Because the dog's on your lap. That's the answer to both questions. Next. 
What age can you start prong and e collar? You can. We 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 do e collars at fourteen weeks old, and we do it all. We just do it. Um, uh, we do it all with food. So you can do actually food and remote collar, and it's all it's all just for a basic obedience stuff. Basic obedience. Next. Dog gets into frenzied state doing zoomies, and often during that time bites my clothes. Yep, because they're uh, aroused. Should the the rest of the question? Oh, should the frenzied state be stopped completely? Yes, inside. Yes, outside. It doesn't have to be stopped um, completely. But what you should do is you should not. If the dog goes to bite your clothes, what you should do is you should act absolutely. There should be a punishment. When I say when I say punishment, um, punishment is not. You're not mad. You're not upset. You're not yelling. You're not screaming. It's something to the dog that's intolerable. So biting clothes is not cute. Um, it's not allowed. So you stop that immediately. If you had a real go collar on the dog, you can say no. Next. Uh, puppy biting. Bonker? Yes. Um, part two of a question. The correction was not for leaving place. It was for growling at door. Hard how to catch arousal. I mean, you always catch arousal because by reading the dog, ears up, chest out, stopping panting all of a sudden with a closed mouth. Next. Um, do you do dog shows? God, no. Never. Next. Difference between stim and correction slash punishment. S um, semantics. Semantics. Next. Uh, do you leave your dogs outside the crate when you're not home? God, no. 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 That's what crates are for. Crates are for all my staff. All my staff crates their dogs, by the way. So what crates are for is um, um, what, what crates are for is they, they contain a dog so it can't destroy things. But also it's a great place for a dog to go. It's just, it's smart. In my opinion, creating a dog is smart ownership. That doesn't mean you're an idiot if you don't. Um, but if you've got all kinds of behavioral issues out of the crate when you are not home, I would question why wouldn't you create your dog? Because your dog could die. So if you feel that a crate is mean, but for some reason your dog destroying things is acceptable or you don't like it, then create your dog. Then, then create your dog. And if they don't like the crate, tough shit. That's where they're going. Next. Dog places well, but shakes with excitement and stress when hearing garage door. Can't settle. Say that one more time. Dog places well, but shakes with excitement and stress when hearing garage door. Yeah, can't that's just, settle. right. So work on, you will work on that triggers. What you'll do is you'll make sure you got a good duration place and then you just role play it. Right? Open up the garage, close the garage, open up the garage, close the garage. Work the dog through the issues. Proofing. Next. A lot of schools for dog trainers don't really cover behavior modification anyway. No, they don't. That's why you have to go to seminars or do a shadow program or do an internship. Next. Uh, hard to find a mentor. It is. Next. And hard. a lot of dog trainers are assholes. A lot of people think I'm an asshole. I'm just outspoken, and I and I um that that that's all. And I'm also sick and tired of all the lies um, about how like reward only can 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 save dogs' lives, and you never need to punish a dog. So you know, a lot of people think I'm an asshole, and that's fine. But according to our social media platform we're helping a lot of people that's all that matters to me next how to desensitize a fear when dog wants to slink away on leash use food so it makes pleasant makes it pleasant tree training is not stupid we treat we, we food train you know, every, every day so um um so f a fearful dog won't take food a fearful dog won't take food so you can't use a dog's food drive when fear drive overtakes food drive you're lost like the dog would so leash on the dog don't let the dog slink away next how do you fit a crate to a dog? What's uh, the math? Um, I don't know if there's an exact math. About one and a half times the size of the dog. It's enough for the dog to move around in, stand up a little bit, lay down like a horse. Next. Uh, ba, ba, ba. I use prong collar per your videos, but my dog doesn't care. He cries because it hurts. It, it won't listen. It doesn't hurt. First of all, we're not using a prong collar to inflict pain on a dog so they listen. That's not the theory behind a prong collar at all. That's not the theory behind any of our training other than to stop a dangerous behavior. For us to stop a dangerous behavior, we make it totally suck for the dog. Totally suck. Yes, we make it very uncomfortable. Like you think about getting into a dog fight, I'll make your life suck. And a lot of people are like, that sounds harsh. Really? That you've never been in a dog fight before. Like true dog fight. Like um, like a dog killed in front of you. So, um, or a dog jumping up on a counter and it died on the way to the hospital. Um, or, you know, uh, a, a dog, you know, resource guarding and it bites your kid as it walks by its food bowl. So, um, 
What was the question? Oh, um, so it doesn't hurt that it's you're not hurting the dog. Chances are your timing is a little bit off. Your timing is off. The crying could be agitation. It could be excitement. It could be excitement. So chances are it could be it can't get to what it wants. So next. Um, how to stop leash chewing when tied back? Um, bonker. Next. Over affectionate dog rolls on back often when I walk in room. Not sure why. Wants constant touch. You just answered your own question. Next. Have a dog with. Um, have a dog with Mega, mega E. e. Can that? I can I have treats? Just praise for. Yeah, you can just use praise. Just use praise. Yep. What's Mega E? Um, it's just the sickness. Uh, my dog brings his bone to me. It's got to eat funny. It eat funny. It's got to eat differently. Next. Oh, my dog brings his bone to me to hold so he can chew them. Is this okay? I can care less unless you don't want to do it. If you want to do it, it's fine. If you don't want to do it, it's not fine. It's up to you to decide. You are the human. You decide the rules. Next. Will the use of e-collar help me correct my German Shepherd better as I am near to ah, it? Ah, gotcha. Thank you. Got it. Yes, it will. A remote collar is a fantastic tool for proper punishment. Next. Do you recommend crate for puppies first night in new home? Yes. Next. Um, how do you train tons of dogs with no degree or huge experience? You start out with one. Got it? Don't worry about training a ton of dog to dogs. You start out with one dog. Every dog trainer out there started out with one dog. All right? Beethoven started out playing one note. The most incredible scientists in the world picked up a test tube or looked through a, micro, a microscope at one point the first time. One dog. Start with one. Next. Five-month GSD bites and barks randomly inside, but great otherwise. Should I correct even if hormonal? If you've got a hormonal issue, you want to talk to your doctor about that. But your dog doesn't have a hormonal issue. It's not a hormonal thing. It's a bad behavior thing. So, so hey, don't bite me. Sorry, owner. My I'm struggling with hormones today. What are you, nuts? No. I don't give a shit if you fucking got PMS. Get your goddamn mouth off of me. So, correct. Next. Uh, Jeff is a great mentor. Thank you, Joseph. Uh... Tree training is stupid. It's not stupid. Who said that? Sparrow Hawk 88. S Sparrow, come on now. Listen, it, there's, there's, there is, there is a, um, there is a, a, a right way and a wrong way to do food training. I see a lot of folks do it wrong, but food is a great motivator and it's a great reward. But I've seen it done wrong a lot. Next. Uh. We think you and Linda are awesome. Uh, Thank you. She's, awesome. she's the awesome one. Next. Next. Uh, my dog will go into his crate just to relax during the day. Awesome. No problem. Next. Uh, do you alpha roll to train? Never have, never will. Next. Alpha roll has no, alpha roll is a great, um, alpha roll is a really, really great way to get bit. Don't alpha roll your dog. Just don't do it. You know, it has zero purpose, zero purpose. Now, if you want to put your dog on the side to cut its nails or to groom it or to look at its ears, that's one thing. But from, from a training standpoint, or give it a canine massage, that's one thing. Or CPR, that's how you do it. But from a from a from a training standpoint, it has no value in my world. And if you if someone does it, that's fine. But just, you know, we don't know. Next. How do I catch and correct the arousal of dog barking at door knock? E collar at slight head movement? Yes, next. Um, uh, do I correct my dog when he's being followed or attacked by off lead dogs? He's on no, e collar. No, no, no. You, 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 you kick the hell out of the other dog. You absolutely don't correct your dog. If your dog gets attacked by another dog, drop the leash, leash and you both go at the other dog. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ideally, you neutralize the threat before it gets to you. And a lot, some people, again, they'll be like, that's horrific. Again, you've never seen a dog killed in front of you then. Like, you've never seen a dog killed in front of you then. You absolutely kick the dog. You do everything possible to keep that dog away. Next. 
better to have and do sit and watch distractions or walk heel past them? Um, it, I, I'd rather just have my dog walk heel next. Uh, my crate top boxer knows everything in the house is mine. I just lend her things. Awesome. Great. Great policy. Next. Um, I'm a first timer. Love you guys. Awesome. Thank you for joining. Um, you tap the screen for hearts. Also, I've got a Patreon page we just set up. It's brand new. I'm, I'm able to help more people on a one-on-one -on -one basis that way. You just go to patreon.com slash solid canine training. Next. My dog sits at thresholds like a circus dog, but only when it's to his benefit. Exactly. Common. Um, common if you don't have punishment. Next. Um, treat training works. Praise training works. Yep. Next. How to stop, I think it's supposed to say sassy behavior. Only follow through with rewards. No, 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 no. Correct for non-compliance. So this is the thing. If you ignore the sassiness and you only reward the good stuff, you'll have a dog that then will be selective listening. So that's the mad, that's the magic of the balance is you reward for what you like, but you can't ignore what you don't like. You can't. Next. Uh, thank you so much for all tips. You guys are awesome. Wish you were closer to me or I to you. RVDogTrainer.com. RVDogTrainer.com. I travel the world doing seminars. Next. Um, Alpha Roll has given me the best dog ever. Awesome. But how many dogs have you done it to? How many dogs are, are, are have you done it to? So, you know, I'm glad it worked for you. But all, I'm all I know is this. The dogs that, first of all, the dogs that we get in, I can't imagine when we would alpha roll it and we would be, we would get bit like the dogs we work with, all our faces would be bit. We'd be in the emergency room every week. So we highly, highly, highly recommend not using an alpha roll as a dog. If it worked for you, great. But I'm telling you, it is extremely difficult. To work next i try to do fifteen thousand steps a day with my dog helpful for socialization or overrated i mean so you know you could you could never walk your dog and have a good socialized dog but the fact that you're walking your dog fifteen thousand steps kudos to you that's awesome will it help with socialization it ain't gonna hurt put it that way it's not all that connected but it's not gonna hurt next is alpha roll the same as side submitting yes bad yep. stuff yep next um, man, I love these so much. So helpful. What do you advise for someone who wants to be a trainer? Start, excuse me, start training dogs. Just start training dogs. Find easy peasy dogs and start training them. Go to seminars, go to workshops. Um, uh, um, there's so much stuff out there. Watch videos, start training dogs. Next. How do I stop my dog from stealing shoes and socks? Um, well, if it's doing when you're not home, you should be creating your dog. If it's doing when you are home, there's a couple of things. Where's your dog and why isn't it with you? Number two, remote collar on the dog, remote collar on the dog, the room that the dog steals things from, set up either your phone or your tablet or you know you FaceTime yourself or Skype yourself or get a nanny cam for under $100. You set it up and as soon as that dog picks up a shoe or a sock, very high, high correction on the remote. Now, I know both sides of the stories, you know, you know, you know, oh, 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 my, oh, my, that's really mean and abusive. All right, we'll see you at the vet office. When you have to do a GoFundMe for $3,500, and I'm, this is, by the way, this isn't towards anybody. I just speak in general terms, by the way. I'm not mad at anybody. But when you got to do, do a fundraiser um, uh, for $3,500 to get your dog fixed, then you'll be like, geez, I guess I should have just, you know, highly corrected my dog. Next. Um, you have a great way of simplifying it all. I complicate. Love how helpful okay. you are. Don't dog training is easy. It's simple. I'm a family dog trainer. Families families don't give a shit about all this scientific and you know a, a lot of markers and all kind of bridges and they, they don't care about all that stuff. They don't they don't care about the quadrants. Make it simple. Make it simple. Your success rate will escalate. Your business will escalate. Next. If you talk to, like, my mechanic, when he talks to me, you know, you know, when he talks to me, da, 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 I said, Mike, can it be fixed? Yes. Good. You fix it and then tell me how to prevent it from breaking again. That's all I want my mechanic to do. He, he's good. Like, you got this. Wonderful. I, I complete, have complete faith in you. Next. 
um, in crate when at work. No bones or toys. Oh, yeah, you can have a bone or a toy. She can have a bone or a toy. Next. Journal training my pack this week. Leadership is a game changer. Awesome. Next. What are a few examples of bad food training? Um, uh, bad food. Here's a good idea. Here's a simple. Here's a simple. Here's a simple thing. If you're really trying to get a good solid command, you dogs in a sit stay. So it's in a sit, and you don't mark it with yes. You take the food out, and the dog responds by breaking command because you took the food out. That's bad food training. Um, you have the dog jump, the dog jumps up on you, you tell it to sit, and then you give it food. You just trained jump, sit. Uh, the dog growls, you tell it no, and then it stops growling, and then you give it food. You just trained growl, don't growl, reward. Next. Uh, is it okay to slap your dog? Um, not for obedience at all. So you don't teach sit down place. As a general rule, we shouldn't be hitting our dogs. But I will not say no one should ever hit your dog because I actually don't believe that at all. Just like I spank my kids. I don't beat my kids. I don't abuse my kids but there'll be a well-timed spanking and I'm not mad at them. It's just matter of fact. And I'm talking about Angela, who is five. As far as a dog is concerned, depending on what it's doing, if a dog came up to me, one of my dogs, and it growled at me and I had nothing in my, like no training tools or nothing, I probably would give it a little bop on the face, on the nose. Absolutely. Now, the dog might attack me, so I'd have to be careful. Um, I have no problem with somebody. If you never hit a dog or child, that's bullshit. Sorry, you don't work with the dogs that we work. Come to my place. Hitting, we're not talking about hitting. We're talking about correcting. There's a big difference. There's a really, really big difference between that. And it's not abusive at all. So I won't go say you should be hitting your dog on a regular basis because then you're you're doing something wrong. But to say never hit your dog, I don't believe that at all. Never spank your child, I don't believe that at all. Nope. And that's got nothing to do with like me like laying my hands on my wife. Like people are like, oh, so you think like no, like that's not what it we're not. Don't don't a lot of people what they do is is they like change the discussion. But to say never hit your dog or your child? No, I don't believe that at all. Next. But if you do, that's fine. Raise a lot of kids, do videos to help other parents raise their kids, um, and make dog training videos on how to fix bad behaviors. Seriously, there's, 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 there are millions of dogs being killed out there every single year. So many families are struggling. If you have a way out there, our way is not the best way or the perfect way. But if you've got a, if you've got a way to train a dog to stop all behead be behaviors and to become off-leash trained and be calm, make lots of videos and put them out there for free. That's what we do. There's plenty of people out there that, that want to see them. Next. Anything different for a Jack Russell training wise? Um, just have to understand what the, the, the role in life is. They are working dogs. You want to meet those needs of a Jack Russell. You want to meet their needs. As far as obedience, um, th it's all going to be the same. Um, same rules apply. But, you know, for their, for their, for their, their work and their life, you definitely want to find something. Uh, if I would not have found you, I probably would have been rehoming my one-year-old dog. Thank you. That's why we do these shows for free. Next. Thank you. How do you pick a dog from rescue? What should you look for? And what are the most common mistakes? Uh, the most common mistakes is finding the most fearful dog in the kennel and you feel bad for it. No offense to anybody that did that. Um, and find feel bad for it and um, uh, getting that dog because you want to save it. All right? Getting that dog because you want to save it. Um, you're going to really, really struggle. Um, getting dogs that are really, really sick. You're going to probably struggle. Um, I'd rather have a dog, you know, make sure there's no aggression towards humans or dogs. Um, if you bring home a dog and it starts biting you and you're not experienced with it, take it back. Take it back. And if the, and if the, and if the shelter says, well, we're going to have to kill the dog. Okay, that's not on you. That's not on you. 
And again, that sounds so mean. It's like, no, it doesn't. Like we have families out there that are struggling financially, mentally, physically because of the bad behavior of the dog. So, and there's a shitload of good dogs in animal shelters that are dying every day who wouldn't bite you. So we have to remember that. We have to remember that. Next. Um, how to deal with a dog who was taught through bad handling to only behave when training collars on. See you one more time. How to deal with a dog who was taught through bad handling to only behave when training collars um, it's, it's, so, it's, so it's collar, it's collar wise. So it's collar wise. Um, uh, what you want to do is always have a collar on it and use a lot of food with the collar is, is, is you know in conjunction with it. Next. I'm hoping to do a paid Skype with you soon. I need help human training. That's the really hard part. Awesome. Or join my Patreon page. You get more one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, uh, service. Next. Um, believe it. My dog ate a glove, dishcloths, not after e collar. There you go. Both those things can kill your dog. Uh, when you are new to dog training, should you still pick and choose clients? Yes, you should. Next. Scared of strangers, remote collar, preemptive stim is helping a little but not fixing. Higher stim? Have your dog, not necessarily. Have your dog around, around lots of people. Have them around lots of people. Around lots of people. Not necessarily interacting with lots of people. Also, do clicker training, food training with your dog. And start getting your dog around lots of different situations where it's nervous and raise up its content. Uh, confidence. Next. Many of mine don't want to do the work. Then wrong clients walk away. They're called they're called non clients. Next. Um, mother dogs correct with a bite on neck. They reward with a lap. They don't bring food like birds. Well, that's a little bit different, but I, I get your point. Next. Crate biting dog waited ninety minutes till he did it and corrected e collar high. I'm good. Or wait again. I don't understand the question. Next. Okay, the dog was biting. Yes. Waited 90 minutes till he did it and yeah. corrected with the e-collar on high. Should uh, they do it again or are they all good? I don't know. If the dog bites you again, you'd have to. Next. Um, but there's more than that, though. You also, to, to, to stop a biting dog, the act of biting, yes, you correct it. But to get the dog to not bite, there's like a lot of stuff that goes behind the scenes um, as far as like obedience work and behavior, other behavior work and confidence building work. And um, there's also um, relationship stuff going, you know, that you need to, you need to build up. Next. Uh, yes, Jeff, very true. Growing up, it was the wooden spoon for us. Grew up fine and knew the rules. Yep, exactly, exactly. Uh, Heather says, got that right, Jeff. No. Oh, have... oh, bites the crate when you're gone. Yes, oh, remote yeah. collar stem. Yes, absolutely. Next. The dog can rip its teeth out. Next. I don't normally read these, but this one's funny. Yep. You look like Tom Hanks. And I want to know, is it you that looks like Tom Hanks or me? <laughs> Hey, I'll take it. Tom Hanks is a really great guy, great actor. Next. Good family man. Next. A sharp cuff under the jaw taught my dog that disagreeing with me washing his paws is not appropriate. There you go. Next. Um, how to train a dog to be afraid of the road? Oh. Uh, well, it's not about training the dog to be afraid of the road. It's, well, you could just use a remote power, and if it gets by the road, you correct it high. But teach the dog really good recall. Teach the dog really good recall, so make sure the dog can turn on a dime for recall. Um, because you, you know, there's roads everywhere. So, um, and you're going to be crossing the road, you know, at some point or walking in the road at some point, what you don't want your dog doing is running in the road and getting hit by a car. So what I would do is make sure if your dog is off leash trained and under remote, I'm sorry, under voice control, and has a great recall. You should be okay. Next. Uh, and don't let your dog off leash until you got that down. Keep it on a long line. Next. LOL. I can still get my 28 year old to scoot if I show him a wooden spoon. Yeah, I know. Next. <laughs> and. Okay, my dog is good when no one is around, but crazy when people come over. Why? I, I know, because it's called distraction and arousal. Distraction and arousal. So as soon as the dog gets aroused, you've got to correct it and you proof it. Don't let people pet the dog. Keep the dog in, in command. Keep them in place. And um, and uh, 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 that's, that, that's, the, that's the problem that everybody has. The dog gets overly aroused. Next. First dog you train, sessions, or full-time training in my home? Um, try both. Try both. Getting a dog from a shelter, maybe, or a rescue, and doing it as like a, your own mini boarding train, you know, at your house, gives you some latitude to take your time. Next. My little doxy pit loves to chew and bury treats in my bed. I, I would. I think that's. I don't want to be sleeping next to treats, so I would stop that. Next. Um, <laughs> my dog is good when no one is around, but when people oh, we did that yeah, we one did, again. Yeah. 
Serious question, please don't block us. Why don't you show high level corrections in your busy video? Okay, so who said that? Pooley Goofy. So, Pooley Goofy. So, here's a good thing I get death threats. I get death threats. My staff gets threatened with physical and sexual violence. Just the fact that we have a tool on a dog, we're abusing animals. If a dog looks nervous or fearful, we're abusing animals. I show more work and more corrections, and this is not ego, than any other dog trainer out there. I'm not the best dog trainer out there. That's not what I'm saying. We show more of our work online than anybody else. I have high corrections that I show on my videos. There's a dishwasher video. There is a um, there is a um, jumping video that I do. But what I would say is this. Make a video of you correcting your dog on high. Put it online. Sponsor it so 100,000 people can see it. So you have to pay for it. If you don't have a big following on social media, you have to sponsor. You have to pay. You do an ad. Teaching a dog how to do something. And now you understand why. Because every day we put out massive amounts of free content that are so helpful to people. And every day we are deleting and blocking and every once in a while turning over something to the police or filing a report with the federal authorities because people are threatening us. This is not a made up story. This is not exaggeration. My colleagues are being threatened with their lives. All we're doing is training dogs. But I show more work than anybody else in this industry does. Why? Because I'm on social media and I consume it as well as create it. I also teach other dog trainers about social media and I'm very aware of the videos that are out there. So most people that use tools won't even show the tools. So I think we're doing a pretty good, I think we're doing a pretty good job. But thank you for the question and I'm glad I had an opportunity to explain it. Next. Dog barks three or four times when visitors come in, correct? Ah, leave it alone. Next. To whom do you believe dogs are truly useful? I believe they should exist for a purpose. You know, I do too, but you know, every dog can't be a working dog. I was just thinking about that the other day. I was just thinking about that doing a tip of the day with that same thing that the dogs aren't here for us. We're here for the dogs, right? The dogs aren't here for us. We're a man's best friend. We're here for them. Find out what that really drives them and meet those needs. So I agree, but everybody can't have like, you know, a sheep herding dog and everybody can't have, like, you know what I mean? They can't like, you know, they can't, you know, uh, uh, you know, they can't, they can't like, you know, they can't, you know, use, you, you know, they can't have a bite dog for every dog, a protection dog. They can't, they can't hurt sheep. But yes, I think absolutely they, um, um, dog should absolutely keep busy doing something. They love it. They love it. They love it. So I'm right along with you there. Next. Why is my dog bad around people? Um, probably lack of socialization and you're probably never told it not to be, you know, in a way the dog understands and a dog understands. So that's, that's, that's the thing is that a lot of people like, no, I say no to my dog, but your dog doesn't believe you. It doesn't believe you. So, you know, it could be lack of socialization. Next, <coughs> next. Uh, hey, Jeff and Linda, I hope that everything's going okay with you all. It's going to be in the 80s. That now. sounds like a Kim. Is that Kim? Hi, Kim. Yes. How yes. are you? We're doing great. Yes. Um, so, by the way, my name is Jeff Gelman of Solid Canine Training. You can go to solidcaninetraining.com. All of our social media platforms are on there. We have massive amounts of YouTube, massive amounts of Instagram, tons and tons of Facebook. Um, um, I'm on iTunes. I'm on Spotify. I'm on SoundCloud. I'm on, and I'm on Google. Um, also, we just set up a Patreon page so I can give more one-on-one -on -one, um, help to people because I get dozens of requests a day that I just can't answer. So by offering a Patreon page now, I can put some resources towards helping more people one-on-one. -on -one. Next. 
Your podcasts have helped us sharpen our skills as dog owners. Much love to you both. Thank you. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Um, how to introduce and increase distractions successfully. So uh, start out with baseline obedience. Um, base, baseline, start out with baseline obedience. You want to do that. And then, um, then you start adding a distraction. So your dog needs to know what no means. So before you got to figure out a distraction that your dog will break command. So you can get a, for twelve dollars, you can get those doorbells that are remote and just there's a knocker button and a doorbell button. You can like knock, 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 and then ding dong. Um, the twelve bucks at Home Depot, the wireless, couple of batteries, put it up on the wall, and you can get to hold it. You get to hold the little thing around with you. Um, uh, that's a good one right there. Or roll a ball past your dog. So once your dog understands what no means and they go back to command, now you can start increasing distractions. Next. I lost my Max last August after 12 plus years of Bichon Freeze. Oh, that sucks. Hubby would like a medium sized dog. Ideas? You know what? I would look for a great dog. Find a great dog. I mean, obviously, if it's a great, great Dane or a Newfie, that's not what you're talking about. But in the 20 to 40 pound range, you know, there's a ton of great dogs. Mixed breed dogs. There's the, there's so many of them out there. There's so many of them out there. You can get a you can get a pit lab mix. You can get like there's so many dogs out there that you can get that that you know that you would make a great owner for. Next. Dog responding to training great in daytime. After dark, he's skittish and distracted. Advice. So a lot of dogs can get nervous around the dark every once in a while. So advice: what I would do is keep a leash on the dog, and then now go back to kindergarten for a little bit. Go back to kindergarten for a little bit. Um, use a lot of food, but if the dog's nervous, it won't take the food, but start doing fun stuff outside. Um, feed him his daily meals outside if you want to. Next. My dog, da, 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 here we go. My dog is five months old and, and full of energy. It's hard to get her to sit because she gets so excited. So what I would do is this. Um, if five months old, your dog is capable of knowing all the basic commands with duration. So yes, five month old dogs don't have as much focus, but the reason why the dog is excited because it hasn't learned to not become aroused. So trust me, I got high energy dogs. I love working dogs hard. I love it. I love, love it when they run on the beach. They play chuck it. They play frisbee. They do. They do agility. I've got a. I've got a sport dog and a detection dog. I love working my dogs. But be calm is be calm. So the way to stop that all that arousal is leash on the dog. You have a prong collar on the dog. Correct it. Just like no. Boom. You can correct arousal. You're not going to ruin the dog. You're not going to ruin the dog. Yes, I of course we want dogs to be excited to learn. But when you're when you drink a liter of soda and you're in third grade and you're supposed to be sitting down at your desk learning and you're freaking mouthing off and on the chair and running around and doing stupid stuff, your teacher's at one point going to go, "Hey, straighten up." Next. I have a pit bull that bites a lot. How do I get to how do I stop that? That's a that's a you know any dog that's biting is a is a is a uh, a, a longer question you know um um uh to to a longer a longer question so um bottom line is this um what is like what else is your you can't answer this now because we don't have we've got you know two hundred and three other questions after this so um six and a half minutes left <laughs> well let's let's stand for a little bit longer it's valentine's day please i know you're struggling but feeling well. okay a little bit um so uh the biting is gonna have to be punished at some point but number one how much structure is in your dog's life are you creating the dog at night creating the dog when you're not home is the dog off the furniture is the dog off the bed are you are you limiting your affection to your dog those are all things you should be doing by the way um how much structure is in the dog's life do you have a leash on the dog so you can make sure you follow through with all your commands does your dog and then um, what kind of leadership structure do you have, you know, you know, with your dog? Next. What e-collar do you recommend? Um, Dogtra, Garmin, e-collar technologies. Sport dog, we don't train on sport dogs, but they're fine if you need to correct on them. Next. Uh, will he bite the crate again after being corrected high, or should I wait outside again for two hours? You, what you can do is you can wait outside with a nanny cam on a day that you don't have to be somewhere. Next. Hi, Jeff and Linda. How can I keep a deaf dog calm in the crate overnight with e color caused sore spots? So that's the problem with um, deaf. It's probably a white dog with short fur, I would imagine, if it's deaf. Um, so um, uh, uh, what I what I would do is you have to switch sides. Switch to a comfort pad. 
They make a comfort pad for dogs. So it's not a burn. Sometimes people will say, oh, it burned my dog. It's impossible. It didn't burn your dog. Um, it's a pressure sore. So it's probably a white dog or a dog with, um, no, with no fur. So what you want to do is you want to like move it around a little bit. But if you use a pre, uh, um, what did I just call that? Comfort pad. A comfort pad on the dog. You won't have the, pro you won't have the problem. Next. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, any recommendations for good deaf dog training videos? Um, all of our videos are applicable towards deaf dogs. All of them. Being deaf, you don't get a free pass. Being three legs, you don't get a free pass. Being blind, you don't get a free pass. Behaviors, behaviors, behavior. We do teach a deaf dog hand signals. It's the only time we teach hand signals. But you can layer the hand signal after the command. Next. You just use leash guidance right now. Lots of food. Next. I'm a vegan. You guys are far from abusers as far as I've seen. Well, well, yeah, Linda doesn't work with dogs. you got to go to our social media page. We're not. If, a lot of people think that, trust me, a lot of people think crating a dog is abusive. Like, so, so um, there's a big difference between punishment and abuse. But thank you. So are you training? We got the vegans out. We got the vegans on our side. <laughs> it's always good. I'm being serious. I'm not being snotty. So are you, tra are your training videos on YouTube? Yes. YouTube and Facebook is all of our content and it's all free. Next. Um, love to you, Jeff. 5,000 videos. <sighs> Daily, we put up videos. Periscope, we do videos. Facebook Live, Instagram. Next. Love to you, Jeff. You're helping lots of people. Yep, thank you. Thanks for recognizing that. Next. Um, thank you. I believe you and now completely understand. Thank you and I'm sorry this shit happened. It don't, it, it's not you. Don't worry about it. It's all. It's part of the game. Next. When you got a big mouth like I do, you know, um, when you got a big mouth like I do and you've got a mission like I do, you're going to get a shitload of people that don't like you. That's all part of it. But sometimes it goes, a lot of times it goes too far. Like the UK, I'm sorry. I love it over there. Some of the meanest people I've ever met, the most angry people I've ever met, vicious people I've ever met. We get hate. We get so much hate from the UK. And it's not, they're not trolls. They're hate groups. Thanks. And they're anti-Semitic. Don't say that. Is Sorry. that true? God, yeah. Remember when it went right before when all that bullshit that I had, I had to file a police, police report. No, I don't remember. Yeah, I had to file a police report over there because of the threats I was getting. Next. Suggest dog jobs for my dog. Not everybody in the UK, by the way. Next. Dog jobs. Um, you can do um, odor work, agility, teach it tasks, do trick training, do obedience, um, teach it, do tracking. Tracking tracking takes, tracking is, is challenging though. No. It's challenging. Trick training is a lot more fun. Next. High energy dog, teaching place for calm. She struggles with like panting. Yep. Won't sit still. Yep, yep. That's why they struggle. They struggle. I struggle with duration work. You ever seen me on a beach? <laughs> no. No. Next. <laughs> we used to go to the beach a long time ago. I know. Um, thanks for taking time away from your family to help us dog owners. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, do a video on your early years as a dog trainer, how you started and got where you are today. I've talked about it that's numerous an old, times. That's an old story. I've talked about it numerous times. Oh, maybe I'll talk about it next. Next. Is a Malinois a good family dog? No, it's not. No, Malinois should most like, every once in a while, I've met two low energy Malinois. You're, unless you're doing sport dog training or high level trick training, um, I would stay away from a Malinois as a family dog. And the shelters are just filling up with them right now. Next. Yep. Um, do you think trainers should push for poor quality e-collars to be removed from Amazon? Um, no, I shouldn't. I think, I think Garmin, Dogtra, Sport Dog and eCower Technology, they should put a shitload of money behind that. I think dog trainers should spend their time on making great videos and helpful videos and just show the collars that they use and then do that. But I think that the mission, my mission is not to get crappy collars off the internet. My mission is to help people train their dogs. But I think that the manufacturers should be working on that stuff. Number one, it's a win-win for them, but it's also the right thing to do. Next. How do you teach a dog to find their toy balls? They always hide them. Um, you'd have to teach the search command um, to the dog, and it's a game. And you start and you start it with um, out in the open, like you would start it like far away in the same room where they can see it. Then you can put it in the next room. Um, and that's how you would do it. Next. 
Linda is such a trooper. Thank she's you. a beyond trooper, Thank guys. You, Jay. She's very, very sick, that. and she's gone over an hour. And my con her contract expires in 20 seconds. Yes, Next. She does. Had a dog trainer tell me that if I didn't run my dog to stretch her muscles out, it's going to be bad. My dog has bad hips. I don't know enough about it. I can, you can probably do you can probably do you know canine massage as well. Next. Um, I love my dog. She has such a great personality. Thank you for your advice. You're welcome. Do you believe in using muzzles on dogs? God, yeah. That's how, especially bite, biting dogs. Absolutely. That's how we we work with biting dogs on muzzles. Yeah, all the time. We work with some really, like, we do with biting dogs every day. Next. How can you build a strong bond with dog that doesn't pay much attention to humans? Some dog, believe it or not, some dogs don't give a shit about us. They just don't. No matter how much connection, no matter how much food drive, they just don't care. And uh, we owned a dog like that. Um, big, Ma big Mama wasn't big on humans. Um, she wasn't, like, antisocial. Um, she was very sweet, actually. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, so, but she was like, she didn't really care less. She got excited around mealtime, but she loved, you know. Or if she saw a rat. Yeah, she loved, <laughs> she loved chasing rats, and she loved, like, wandering around the yard, and she loved lying in the sun, and she, she didn't play with dogs either. She wasn't aggressive. She just, like, she just hung out, just hung out. So, you know, you, that might be the dog you have, but engagement games will help that. So what do you do? Become everything to your dog. So just become, become everything to your dog. Nothing in life is free. Become everything. Next. Um, ba, ba, ba. Next. Corrected with nanny cam. Corrected high. Meant how to know it stopped completely. I can leave. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. No, nobody knows. Nobody knows. I wouldn't know. I mean, I guess you'd have to. You have to try. You'd have to like play the nanny cam back. But you'd have to record it, leave, come back, watch. What wa you know? Watch it again. Just watch it again. I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. You know, a lot of times, sometimes we'll say, well, if some people say, well, if you correct the dog, is it going to last? I don't know. People people steal. They get a, People get a speeding ticket for $1,000, and they still speed. People go to jail for years, and they still commit crimes once they're out. You know what I mean? So if your dog bites and wrecks the crate completely, then you need to just literally spend time. You know, uh, uh, it does suck. I know. If you need to spend time. Um, uh, you can get a stronger crate, but then it can bite its teeth. You can get a, you're better off getting a, um, um, a strong crate um, to start with. But if it, but if it chews too much on a strong crate, it'll ruin its teeth. But at least the crate doesn't get destroyed. Next. Um, how to stop Beagle from jumping up on us? Any dog. I've got free videos on that. You use a high, a high punisher, high correction for that. It takes about two seconds to stop. Next. And I just, just get my video in my YouTube channel. In the, in the search box in my channel, how to stop jumping. Next. Um, you can teach dog to head down. That will stop the physical act of panting and help the dog relax. Exactly, yeah. Head, thank you for suggesting that, whoever did that. Yeah, head down absolutely it's, does it's that. It's pooly goofing. Oh, pooly goofing, yeah, great suggestion. So we don't teach head down. We teach just duration work, and then head naturally goes down. But, um, uh, but a lot of times... Um, people do teach head down, and when they do head down, they teach it as a command. Um, the dog does go into a relaxed state almost immediately. I, Next, I gotta go. you got to go. All right. Yeah. So Linda's got to go. She's I, not feeling well. Thanks, Kim. I um, just saw your comment. All right. So thanks everybody. We can never get to all the questions. We get hundreds of questions here. That's why we set up the the Patreon page. So this is what we're doing with the Patreon page. If you go to Patreon.com/slash Solid Canine Training. If you join that page, just go to the page and you see all the benefits. I'm doing a second podcast every week, a minimum of two. I'm going to be doing one. It's going to be by myself. I will be answering um, answering um, questions in long form. So I'll probably do 10 questions a podcast. For people that join the Patreon page, there's certain levels you can join. And what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to get uh, the question answered in long form. So not just a quick thing like this. I'll read the whole question and I'll answer the whole question. And that's going to be for um, for the Patreon people, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Um, but I'm still going to be doing thousands of videos for free. But this is another way that I can help people. But in order to do that, I, I can only be in so many places at once. So we got to leverage like my time with somebody else now doing some stuff. So the Patreon page is going to really be able to help people. Also, it's cheaper than a Skype session for people. So it's now now we're we're making 
access to me really easy. You can go. Thank you. Love you. Happy Valentine's Day, Linda. Thanks. Same to you. Yeah, we went out for um, dinner. Um, it was it was nice. All right. All right, guys. Madly in love with you. Jeff Gelman, solid canine training, and um, we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody on YouTube, everybody on Spotify, SoundCloud, um, uh, uh, Google, uh, iTunes on Google, madly in love with you. And um, thank you guys so much for, for, for following me. Thank you for listening to the podcast. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, just I really value that you're uh, consuming my content. It just mean it just mean it means so much to me, guys. So much to me. So thank you, and I'll talk to everybody soon.